The backwards law, or the law of reverse effort, is a pursuit of what we want, can in many ways be the reason we don't achieve it. I know it seems counterintuitive, and someone watching may be thinking, who is this imbecile on my screen? What if I need to lose weight and I'm borderline diabetic? I'll just open up this case of Twinkies and lose a limb. To that I say, no. Don't read into this paradox too literally. If you're trying to achieve something simple and linear like weight loss, of course putting more effort into losing weight will result in more weight loss. It's when things get a bit more complex, things get blurry and we're dragged into the weeds. When goals get more complex, or especially when it involves a person's psychology, is when we start to see this paradoxical effect. For example, some of the least happy people are the people who pursue happiness the most. The more desperately you try to be happy, it seems the harder it becomes. The people who want to be more socially confident are often the ones who seem to have the most crippling social anxiety and low confidence, because fixating on it leads to overthinking and anxiety. People who want to be loved and liked can result in people pushing them away as they seem clingy and needy, leading them to be even lonelier. I know it seems sick, and if there is a god, it seems pretty fucking cruel. There is a fix though. If you no longer pursue happiness and accept that negative emotions are okay, and it's fine not to be constantly happy, this can actually make you happier. And if you want to increase your social confidence, you need to be able to accept that you may not always be confident and that you will make a social fool out of yourself sometimes, and that's okay. Which in turn relaxes your state of mind when relating to social situations, resulting in more confidence. And if you want to be loved and liked, you need to be okay if people don't like or love you, and be happy within yourself. So it isn't all bad, there seems to be an almost poetry-like lesson in this paradox somewhere. Thanks God. While I could go on this video to further talk about how the law relates to a person's mental well-being, and how the backwards law shows that how desperately wanting to be rich makes a person feel poorer and more unworthy, creating a loop that's never ending with you constantly chasing to feed your feelings of inadequacy, and how the pursuit of superficial things might actually be causing a lot of people to live unhappy lives. So, how does the backwards law attain to success? Let's say you set a goal and you ruthlessly pursue that goal. In this situation what tends to happen is people heavily invest their self-worth into the achievements of the said goal or the future success of it. The problem is, this can create a sense of extreme self-pressure and anxiety on completing the goal, which can hinder you from ever reaching it. This overinvestment of our self-worth means if we fail, which if we're honest we most likely will meet failure on the path to our goals, means that if we do, we can be crushed if we're not careful. It seems to be the case that the most successful people fail the most, and often the people who have never experienced failure aren't in most cases the most successful as instead they avoided failure through the path of least resistance, as it seems failure is a part of success itself. For example, Steve Jobs was fired from the company he founded. It wasn't until years later and countless other ventures that he was back at the helm of Apple. Warren Buffett, the best investor to ever live, got most of his wealth from only a handful of investments. While there's no doubt these people worked hard, what seems to set them apart is their ability to face failure. Steve Jobs once said, and you've got to be willing to fail. You've got to be ready to crash and burn, with people on the phone, with starting a company, with whatever. If you're afraid of failing, you won't get very far. In a sense, it seems that many successful people share the ability to not invest so greatly in the outcome, so that when failure arrives, it doesn't bring you crashing down so hard that you don't get back up again. With every peak, there is a low. There is a yin and yang to life, and constantly pursuing the yin, or avoiding or otherwise not accepting the yang, won't prevent it from coming, but instead will only make it worse when it inevitably arrives. It's not an effective long-term strategy. Now the problem I see is society relays the same message. Just work harder to achieve what you want. And there is an element of truth there. But what I don't see explained is the risk involved in what is now a culture of high ambition. The fixation of lofty goals itself begets a feeling of never being enough. Simply setting a goal to become richer, or become more confident, or fill in the blank, admits you are void of it currently. The overfixation on these causes you to need and want the goals more and more, making it harder and harder to achieve them in the first place, if you're not careful. Now the answer isn't not to have goals, however, when setting goals, to be aware of the backwards effect, I believe is vital. The key is focusing on the process, not the end result, and accepting failure as a part of that process. 
The best way to gear yourself for failure is negative visualization, a stoic practice in which you think of all the possible ways it could go wrong. I know it seems counterintuitive and yet another paradox, but once you think of all the ways it could go horrendously wrong, you then imagine how you'd be okay even if they did happen. You would think that positive visualization would be the key, right? Well, this is the backwards law, so no. And it's not to say that positive visualization doesn't have its place, but this would have the same effect of putting all your self-worth in the outcome, and instead it would make it harder to deal with failure as if you have raised your expectations too high. Take this video for example, I'm trying something new. For repeat viewers you may have noticed that my previous videos are pretty fucking serious. In my defence, some of the topics in self-improvement are hard to make light-hearted. Try making a joke in a video about stoicism. But I noticed this and I decided to add a bit of my personality when making these videos and attempt to make them more light-hearted. So what's the worst that could happen? I could get a bunch of mean comments. While I might briefly want to die inside, I find solace in the fact that God isn't that generous. So nothing changes. I wake up the next day, I start the next video, life goes on. If however I deluded myself through positive thinking into believing this new change will catapult my views. If it didn't happen, I would be left feeling pretty deflated, and this would probably make me apprehensive of trying something new on this channel in future, which wouldn't serve me at all. At least in that way it's clear that negative visualisation may be better to positive visualisation due to the freedom it gives you from outcome, which will only help you with longevity and consistency through the added resilience to failure. The backwards law is a reminder that the overfixation on anything can be bad, leading to the very opposite of what we want or desire. And in a society that champions success above anything else, it tells us that even success isn't immune to this. When you have an end goal in mind, start at the end goal and figure out the steps backwards to where you are now. Once you have found that, you have found your first step. It's easy to grandise on what we want without truly appreciating or properly understanding what is needed of us to get there. This takes humility and the ability to humble yourself to take it step by step, which isn't easy. In movies, TV, and any way you look online, the character portrayal of someone who's successful is often someone who's incredibly narcissistic and sure he can do anything. While it is true that you need to be a little bit narcissistic to do it in the first place, it seems in reality it would be impossible to succeed without the humility to look at the first step and realise you're not too good for it, as well as to have the character to embrace failure as a path of success. If you go out on stage before you learn to sing, it's fair to say the embarrassment and pain you will receive will stop you from ever trying again. If you are want to avoid succumbing to this backwards law, the key is humility. As said by Alan Watts, if you want to change the world, start off by making your bed. But that's just my take from some random guy on the internet. Go find out for yourself. <laughs>